Hey guys, what's going on? It's King Crystal here, and if you're currently unaware, AMD has finally announced its Ryzen 3000 line, specifically the Ryzen 7 series. These new parts bring new competition to the CPU market, and so I decided that it'd be a perfect time for a build guide. Keep in mind this is just a guide. For example, if you like a better case or find a better deal on a graphics card, don't feel obligated to follow my exact list. Without further ado, let's get into the build. For the processor, I chose the Ryzen 7 3700X. At just $329, I would say this processor is the best value for the Ryzen 7 lineup. It offers 8 physical cores with multi-threading for 16 threads, as well as a base of 3.6GHz and a boost of 4.4GHz. AMD also claims a 15% IPC increase, which will allow for improved competition in single core workloads. To cool the CPU, I chose the $70 Cooler Master ML240L. As the name implies, this is a 240mm liquid cooler. It should have no issues cooling the 65W TDP Ryzen 7 3700X, and also comes included with an RGB pump head and fans. For the motherboard, I chose the X570 ASRock Tai Chi. This board was shown at Computex, and my best prediction would be that it would cost somewhere around $220. Needless to say, it's an X570 board with plenty of bells and whistles, including a beefy VRM and onboard Wi Fi. For memory, I went with the $75 kit from Team Dark. This kit includes two 8GB sticks for dual channel, each running at 3000MHz, which should benefit Ryzen in just about any task, including gaming or video editing. To boot off of, I chose a $47 480GB SSD by the Team Group. This should easily handle the OS and any commonly used applications you plan to use. For mass storage, I included a $60 2TB Seagate drive. This drive runs at 7200RPM, has 64MB of cache, and should be perfect for larger games or video files. The $450 RTX 2070 WinForce was my graphics card of choice. This card outperforms a GTX 1080 and can play a lot of games at 4K 60fps and just about any at 1440p 60fps. It also has 8GB of VRAM as well as a rather hefty air cooler to ensure you don't thermal throttle. For the case, I went with the brand new, also released at Computex, $80 Fantex P400 Mesh. The P400 from Fantex has always been one of my favorite cases, however the only caveat was the poor airflow. Fantex plans to fix this issue with the new Mesh version of this case, offering the same awesome interior layout as the first, however far better airflow due to the front mesh panel. Finally, for the power supply, I went with the $110 Seasonic Focus Gold 750. It's a 750 watt power supply with an 80 plus gold efficiency rating. It's fully modular and comes with all black cables to avoid that ketchup and mustard mess. So that was my Ryzen 3000 series build guide. After totaling up all the parts, the total came to just around $1,500. I hope everyone enjoyed and maybe learned a thing or two. If you want to engage with the King Crystal Tech community, join Christocord, the official King Crystal Tech Discord server, which will be linked in the description below. Without further ado, this is King Christo signing off, and peace out.